forgive me, I was feeling a little parched. And what better to put my body than water? You've seen water before. It's a clear, colorless, odorless, tasteless substance. It's vastly abundant here on Earth, which is one of the reasons we're able to survive here. <laughs> About 60% of our body weight is due to the water in our bodies. This little molecule has a very important role to play in our lives and in chemical reactions involving solutions, the topic of this video series. Science is real from the Big Bang to DNA. Looking at the molecular model of water, we see that it is a polar substance, having kind of a positive side and kind of a negative side to it. It's this quality that lets it dissolve things that are composed of charged particles, such as an ionic salt. This particular salt is table salt. We chemists like to call it sodium chloride. It's composed of positive sodium ions and negative chloride ions. Water can even dissolve something that's just kind of charged in that polarish sort of way, such as 2-propanol, which is also known as isopropanol, which is also known as isopropyl alcohol, which is most commonly seen in your medicine cabinet under the name rubbing alcohol. Because isopropanol has a polar side to this molecule with that OH group, the water is able to bring it into solution. Just looking at the label on the bottle, we can see it's a 70% solution of alcohol, with the other 30% being water. That said, not all aqueous solutions are alike. Some solutes, like sodium chloride, drop into solution and immediately begin breaking apart into their separate ions. Their attraction to each other is not strong enough to overcome the pushy water molecules. These kinds of solutions are called electrolytes. Yep, just like the ones they bottle for you in Gatorade and other sports drinks. They're called electrolytes because these solutions allow electricity to travel through them. Who turned off the lights? Okay, I have this light bulb, which is plugged into the wall over there, but it doesn't work right now because these two prongs aren't touching and can't complete the circuit. If I stick it in my pure H2O, nothing happens. Water is a molecular compound. There's no charged particles in there. But what if I move it to my salt solution from before? Ta-da! We have light! All the little ions in solution allow the electricity to flow from this side of the circuit to that side of the circuit, letting our light bulb shine. Solutes like sodium chloride completely dissociate, or completely ionize, when they dissolve in solution. These types of electrolytes are called strong electrolytes because they are strong conductors of electricity. Ionic salts that are soluble in water tend to form strong electrolytes because they dissociate into their separate ions when they dissolve. There are some substances that only partially dissociate when they dissolve in water. For example, vinegar is essentially a solution of acetic acid in water. This solution is considered a weak electrolyte because most of the acetic acid molecules actually stay together rather than dissociate. However, a small percentage do dissociate, so it can conduct a small amount of electricity through it. Finally, we are left with the non-electrolyte. Substances that do not dissociate do not allow electrons to travel through their solutions because there are no charges to attract the electrons. Molecular compounds, such as 2-propanol, are non-electrolytes because they do not dissociate. Perhaps because they aren't ionic compounds? I mean, what would they dissociate into? They aren't made of ions. <laughs> Now that we have a physical property to qualitatively describe our solutions, how well it conducts electricity, we can move on to quantitatively describing those solutions. Not 
all solutions of sodium chloride are alike. Okay, all are strong electrolytes, but not all are going to react to the same capacity. That all depends on their molarity. Molarity is a numerical or quantitative way of describing how concentrated the solution is. A solution that is very concentrated has many moles of solute compared to the amount of solution. The fewer moles of solute, the less concentrated or more dilute the solution is. Simply describing a solution as concentrated or dilute is not very helpful when trying to predict the theoretical yield of a reaction involving a solution. So we use molarity to get back to the numbers. Molarity is a value that indicates a ratio between the moles of solute per liter of solution. Notice Andy's flask is labeled as 0.1 molar NaCl. That 0.1 molar means there are 0.1 moles of NaCl per liter of solution. Now, his flask is obviously not filled with a full liter of solution. So, let's figure out how many moles of NaCl are actually present. Using my graduated cylinder, because that is a good instrument for measuring exact volume, and it will help me determine what volume of solution is actually present in the flask. Reading the two graduated cylinders, the total ends up being 187.2 milliliters of solution. I have 187.2 milliliters of a 0 0.10 molar solution of sodium chloride. Well, I can also say that I have 0 0.10 moles of sodium chloride per liter of solution. From there, I know that in one liter, I have 1,000 milliliters. Canceling my units, I'm left with 0 0.01872 moles of NaCl. Or, using sig figs and scientific notation, 1.9 times 10 to the negative 2 moles of sodium chloride. From there, I can do so many things. Once I get the mole value for something, I can figure out the mass originally used to make that volume of solution. 1.1 grams! Or, I can see how much precipitate I can make from mixing all that solution with 25 milliliters of a 0 0.50 molar solution of silver nitrate. Point My point is, our power to use dimensional analysis just became a whole lot stronger. Now, there's an important thing to note here when describing the molarity of a solution. The labeled molarity is given in terms of moles of the entire solute molecule before it goes into solution. When I say 0.1 molar sodium chloride, it means that there was a bunch of sodium chloride molecules as an entire unit. But, what happens when I mix it with the water? Well, they dissociate. An aqueous solution of sodium chloride doesn't really contain a bunch of sodium chlorides. It actually contains a bunch of sodium ions and a bunch of chloride ions. How much of each? Well, they split up in a one-to-one -one ratio. So, this solution could easily be relabeled as 0 0.10 molar sodium ions and 0 0.10 molar chloride ions. Well, who cares? I'm basically saying the same thing. But what if I had a 0 0.10 molar solution of magnesium chloride? How does the way magnesium chloride dissociate differ from sodium chloride? Using our nomenclature talents, we know that magnesium chloride is MgCl2. 
When a molecule of magnesium chloride dissolves in water, it also dissociates into its separate ions. This time, we end up with twice as many chloride ions as we have magnesium ions. So the new label could read 0.1 molar magnesium ion and 0.2 molar chloride ion. Because different substances dissociate into different numbers of ions and to different extents, remember a strong versus a weak electrolyte, the molarity listed will be for the molecule as a whole. However, you need to be sure to remember to think about the chemistry of what is actually present in the solution as we begin reacting those solutions with each other. Well, that's it for video one. See you in class. Science is real.